Thank you for being here and for those who are watching versus the web. In a moment, the chiefs and I will provide an update on yesterday's demonstrations and, conver and conversations the city has had and actions we are taking. Uh, we will also describe what we are going to be doing on the COVID front with testing. But as long as we have these city updates, I also want to start by remembering why we are here. Last week, George Floyd was murdered by police officers in Minneapolis. Those officers have rightfully been charged, but justice has yet to be done. George Floyd was a son, a father, a partner, a brother, an uncle. He should be alive today. His murder is the latest example of the racism that permeates every institution our, in our country and reminds us all of the work that is left to be done. Today also happens to be Breonna Taylor's birthday. She would have turned 27. She was shot eight times by police in her home in Louisville in the middle of the night. It has been nearly three months since she has been killed and there's been no justice. Yesterday, we learned that Manuel Ellis, a 33-year-old black man in Tacoma, was killed by police. Tacoma Mayor Victoria Woodards has directed the police officers involved be fired. I've spoken with her, support her, and wholeheartedly support her actions. Over the last week, thousands across Seattle have come together to raise their voices, share their anger and grief, and to demand justice not just for George Floyd or Breonna Taylor, but for all of those who have lost their lives before them. I am thankful for these demonstrators for sharing their voices, for demanding more from all of us in a position of power, including myself and the chief of police. I want to talk a little bit about last night. Yesterday, thousands gathered, marched, and protested until the very early morning hours. Chief Bess and SPD have tried to make operational adjustments every day to allow those peacefully gathered to march across the city and to gather in Capitol Hill. I want to express again my deep thanks to the protesters and community activists who've showed again the power of peaceful collective action. That must remain the goal for both those who want to speak out by coming together and for our police department. I have every confidence that we continue another night of peace, but with robust protests, demonstrations, marches, and a raising of the voices of this community. Every night, Chief Bust has worked, to, worked with her commanders and officers to adjust their approach, like moving the barriers so there's more room to spread out, creating more distance between officers and demonstrators, communicating more with the crowds and relying on help from those who are there peacefully to stopping some who might throw rocks or take other actions that aren't peaceful. We need more dialogue between officers and protesters. We need more communication on the front lines. So Chief Best is making continued adjustments and we are evaluating how we can formalize more de-escalation teams on both sides to create better communication. In the early morning, there was one situation that could have escalated quickly when a small incendiary device of some sort was set off in the crowd. I'll let the chief discuss this incident more. But ultimately, it did not lead to the escalation. I believe Seattle can continue to protest peacefully. There's been a lot of concerns raised about both individual use of forces and the Seattle Police Department's crowd control policies, procedures, and actions. I share those concerns. As I told you earlier, I asked them to review the individual actions of officers and the overall crowd management actions and provide me and the chief with any immediate changes we could make and any systematic recommendations that they had. I also spoke to Patty Hayes and Dr. Jeff Duchin on Wednesday to ask for their recommendations on steps SPD could take given the public health concerns of COVID-19 and ensure the city had clear recommendations on the impacts of COVID-19. 
Because of SPD's adjustments and better communication with demonstrators, and because demonstrators have come by the thousands, raised their voices, but been, been peaceful, because of SPD's actions, tear gas has not been used since earlier this week. But it's critical that this is addressed by policy and the chief's direction. I appreciate the urgency for a quick recommendation from our accountability partners and our public health partners. While we get their review, Chief Vest has ordered, and I agree, she will immediately issue a directive to her officers banning the use of tear gas for 30 days in any of these protests. I will let Chief Vest discuss the policy change with you. In conversations with the Chiefs, I know she agrees that SPD officers do not need to be using tear gas at protests as a crowd management tool. In 2017, the city of Seattle submitted a crowd management plan to the court as part of the consent decree process. This was after my time as US attorney and before my time here as mayor. It was reviewed at that time by our accountability partners, the court monitor, the Department of Justice, and was approved by the court. Understanding that we have seen continued acts of police violence and a failure to de-escalate both at home and nationwide, I will be asking the city to work with the Office of Police Accountability, the Inspector General, the Community Police Commission, Seattle Police Department, and the Federal Court Monitor to immediately review our crowd management plan and in the next 30 days, return recommendations. This review should better emphasize de-escalation tactics and should incorporate recommendations from our accountability partners on the use of any crowd control techniques including the use of tear gas and flashbangs. We'll also ask them to engage a range of community and national experts to find innovative solutions to de-escalating large crowd events. Simple things can help. I said yesterday that it was, was uh, suggested to the chief they put in a better sound system so that the crowds could clearly hear from the police. We put that in yesterday at the direction of Chief Best and she and her officers heard back from people that it made things better because they understood what was going on. Some community leaders that I have met with have suggested that we create de-escalation teams um, for community demonstrations. These would involve people taken from the community, trained in de-escalation, and having the responsibility to provide that communication and de-escalation between police and the people demonstrating. I would like that to be one of the ideas that the CPC and our other accountability partners review during this review. We also have to remember we still are in a nationwide pandemic. We have to remember that COVID-19 is still a very real threat to our community and to every demonstrator who is out there, it provides an actual threat to their health. Yesterday, I announced that the city's new partnership with the University of Washington Medicine will provide free citywide testing. We now have the capacity to test 1,600 individuals each day with sites in North and South Seattle. Currently, the King County Public Health guidelines around testing would usually only test someone who is showing symptoms or those who have been close contact with someone who is uh, COVID-19 positive. But I've also heard concerns from individuals who've been attending these demonstrations that they would like to be tested. I will have more to share with you later today, but we will be updating our MOU with King County Public Health to allow everyone who is participating in these demonstrations to be tested at our city sites, regardless of whether they are exhibiting symptoms or not. Again, this will be free. We've also asked King County Public Health and the public health system to make sure that anyone who is demonstrating who gets tested knows and we have mechanisms in place in the public health system that that information will be kept confidential. Again, please go to www.seattle.gov slash COVID-19 testing and you can sign up for a test. We are rapidly trying to ramp up our testing capacity here in Seattle and we need to ensure that all those who are demonstrating are eligible to immediately get tested for COVID-19. 